A federal appeals court in Washington, D.C., denied former President Donald Trump's plea to review an order limiting what he can say about his criminal case with the 2020 election aftermath, setting up a future Supreme Court fight. Welcome everyone. In today's video, we're going to tell you appeals court gives knockout blow to Trump with ruling. In a brief unsigned opinion published Tuesday, the justices of the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit refused Trump's request to hear the disagreement over the gag order NBNC or in front of the whole court. In December, a three-judge panel essentially upheld the gag order, allowing Trump to seek a full appeals court review. But before we proceed the further video, if you're new to this channel, remember, go ahead and to hit the bell icon to subscribe so you won't miss the informative videos we will upload in the future. USN District Judge Tanya Chotkan, who is overseeing special counsel Jack Smith's case against Trump in Washington, issued an order in October at Smith's request prohibiting Trump from making inflammatory remarks about Smith, his staff, court personnel, and potential witnesses who could be called to testify in the case. The three-judge bench affirmed the majority of Chutkin's order, stating that Trump cannot target possible witnesses or comment publicly about any lawyers involved in the case except Smith himself or their families. Trump, on the other hand, can continue to criticize the Biden administration and the Justice Department, alleging that Smith's case is politically motivated. Tuesday's order dismissing Trump's appeal indicated that the decision was unanimous, with no judges demanding a vote on the issue. Trump's lawyers have previously stated that if the appeals court did not find in their favor, they would most likely take the case to the Supreme Court. In the December order, the three judges, Mew Patricia Millett, Cornelia Pillard, and Bradley Garcia, said they agreed with Chutkan that some aspects of Trump's public statements pose a significant and imminent threat to the integrity of the ongoing criminal prosecution, requiring a speech-constraining protective order. However, the judges ruled that Chutkin's decision sweeps in more protected expression than is required and overturns several of the limits, including those that ban Trump from publicly speaking about Smith. Trump was accused on four counts for allegedly attempting to obstruct the transfer of presidential power following the 2020 election. He's pled not guilty and denies any misconduct. The former president's legal team argued that any gag order violated Trump's right to free expression, particularly on the campaign trail, and tied his vociferous criticism of the special counsel's criminal prosecution to his quest to return to the White House. Smith's lawyers, on the other hand, claimed that some of Trump's public statements and social media posts compromised a fair trial and the safety of individuals involved. The trial was supposed to start in March, but it is now on pause while the appeals court evaluates Trump's separate claim of presidential immunity from prosecution. Chutkin rejected that claim last year, ruling that, while all trial deadlines are delayed, the gag order's restrictions remain in effect during the appeals process. Former President Trump hopes to deliver an early knockout blow in the Republican primaries with a landslide victory in Iowa on Monday. Trump has not shied away from raising expectations in the Hawkeye state, where polling averages from the Hill Decision Desk HQ show him dominating his nearest rival by 36 percentage points. A close race might revitalize a rival campaign. However, a landslide, double-digit victory in Iowa would give Trump momentum heading into New Hampshire next week, when strategists and Trump friends believe the former president can effectively clear the field with another large victory. It's always possible that his advantage will diminish or shift Ralph Reed, chair of the Faith and Freedom Coalition, said during a conference call with reporters, but based on my talks with folks on the ground, we're not seeing anything like the huge shift that occurred in 2016 between mid-October and early December, which caused sin. Ted Cruz Artexed to take the lead. Let's see what happens on caucus night. Iowa is especially important for Florida Gov. Ron DeSantis Ray, who has invested resources into the state, won Gov. Kim Reynolds or endorsement, and spent months visiting with people in all 99 counties. While he has worked in recent weeks to moderate expectations, analysts have argued that anything less than a good second place showing would be disastrous for the Florida governor. 
Former United Nations Ambassador Nikki Haley, on the other hand, has shifted her focus away from Iowa and towards New Hampshire. She has been gaining ground in the Granite State, and new polling suggests that Trump's support has dipped slightly in recent months. A solid performance in Iowa might set Trump up for another victory in New Hampshire. But a better-than-expected finish for Haley, in particular, could signal a more competitive race in the coming days. The fact is, because the primary voters in Iowa and New Hampshire are so different, winning in both would indicate solid control and truly complete dominance over the Republican Party, said Republican strategist Brian Sechik, saying that this thing is finished if Trump wins the two early states. Trump is in a much better position going into Monday's caucuses than he was in 2016, when he finished second to Cruz. In 2016, Trump and his crew were political rookies who had little experience with the caucus procedure or how to convert rally energy into committed costgoers. This cycle, Trump and his team are not only more organized on the ground in Iowa, but he has also won over the evangelicals who make up a major portion of the Iowa electorate and helped Cruz win the 2016 caucuses. According to Steve Scheffler, an Iowa Republican National Committee member, Costgoers know what Donald Trump did, and his opponents have yet to demonstrate that they can do better on policy issues vital to evangelicals. J. Ann Selzer's December Des Moines Register poll, widely regarded as the gold standard Iowa poll, placed Trump at 51%. In a sign of his dominance, 70 of his followers indicated they had made up their minds to back him. In comparison, 34 of Haley backers and 30 of DeSantis supporters stated they were committed to supporting their respective candidates. No one has ever, in the modern period, won a competitive primary fight heading into caucus night by more than 12 and no one has cracked 50%. Jason Miller, a top Trump aide, said in an interview with The Hill on News Nation, So, we believe we're in very good shape with President Trump, and we believe we'll win. But you know what? I am going to win. If Trump wins by a lower margin than expected in Iowa, it could indicate that the primary would be more closely contested than expected, especially if people rally around one candidate. According to strategists, Trump's margin of victory will provide insight into his opponent's long-term viability. Republican strategist Matt Makawayak predicted Trump will win the state on Monday, but he said one of the big concerns for the caucuses is if the former president's support crosses the 50 mark. It tells you whether half of the people who show up are willing to vote for someone other than Trump, because that's what it's going to take if this becomes a head-to-head -head battle in other locations," Makawayak explained. Trump's strong support in Iowa was on show Wednesday night when he appeared at a Fox News town hall in Des Moines. Trump had a favorable crowd, with the vast majority of those who posed questions saying they intended to caucus for the former president, and attendants repeatedly cheered his replies. At the same moment, Haley and DeSantis were on stage for a CNN debate just up the road where the two contenders vying for Trump's candidacy spent little time bashing the previous president. The CNN moderators asked a few questions on the former president, including one about Trump's activities on Jan. 6, 2021, and another about whether Trump has the character to be president again. But Haley and DeSantis focused primarily on each other exchanging insults and accusations of lying. Trump's opponents have had to tread a tight line as they campaign against the former president, trying not to alienate his followers while attempting to cut into his lead. During the debate, Haley warned of chaos if Trump won another four years, while DeSantis claimed Trump is running to pursue his concerns rather than the country's. They also criticized the frontrunner, who has missed all of the party's debates this cycle. However, Trump's decision to avoid confrontations with his opponents does not appear to have harmed his campaign. I don't think his absence on the debate stage has mattered one iota during this race. Iowa-based Republican strategist Jimmy Center said, Maybe they aimed a few digs at the former president, but nothing significant. It was the body blows and uppercuts. They were throwing each other that inflicted the most harm, he claimed of Haley and DeSantis on stage in Iowa though he contended that the damage was likely little. Trump will face a different test in New Hampshire, which is a more libertarian state that permits independents to vote in party primaries. I don't think there's ever been a candidate that won both Iowa and New Hampshire in the contemporary age, 
said Reed, the Faith and Freedom chairman. All I'm saying is that this isn't over, and the nomination process is more of a marathon than a sprint. And if you get a stunning result in one of these first three states, you're heading to Super Tuesday, if not much later. That's all for today's video. Trump will attend the Iowa caucuses on Monday, but he will immediately shift his focus to New Hampshire, where he will have a rally ahead of the January 23 primary. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button to avoid missing any new videos from our channel. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.